it's an interesting concept pulling full weight V doubles with a 13 litre engine. It wasn't so long ago that people would have laughed at you if you'd said you wanted to do that. But with the, with the increase in power and torque that, that engine manufacturers are getting out of a 13 litre engine these days, it's actually a viable option. Driving this truck, it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing because it doesn't really feel like it's performing very well. Everything's so quiet, low RPM, um, using all that torque really well. 12 speed transmission, <coughs> but it just doesn't feel like it's doing its thing. But looking at all the information tells a whole different story. So my trip times out of Melbourne and to Nil were pretty much minute for minute the same. Average speed of over 80 k's an hour, and, and that includes a lot of road works, as you can see, um, and going through all those towns, a couple of sets of traffic lights at Horsham to help me out. Um, and on top of that, it's, it's achieving better than two kilometres to the litre, and that's at 58 tonne. Um, so it, it's a strange kind of thing, because uh, you sit here, and it doesn't feel like it's doing anything special, but the numbers tell a whole different story. Uh, the numbers are what you have to go by. Um, the numbers are what pays bills. So it's it's a very interesting concept. This low RPM, tall dip ratio, um, but still managing to to pull 58 ton relatively easily. I'm not losing much ground over any of these bigger trucks. Um, and over you know, over the length of the journey, it might be 10 minutes, I guess, if that. Um, and for all that, it's getting two k's in the litre. No brainer. One of the things we tend to concentrate on when we talk about European trucks is the driver comfort. As you can tell, cruising along at 100 k's an hour, 1400 RPM noise levels in here are uh, rock bottom. This bit of road also gives us a chance to really test out the ride, um, the ride quality of the Actros. And I have been known when driving other trucks back off to 90 k's an hour through here just to look after the equipment and to stop my head from hitting the roof. I've got the seat gear locked on the hardest setting so there's virtually no bounce in the seat. The only suspension that's working to smooth out my ride is the cab suspension and while it, you can still tell you're sitting above the, uh, the steer axle Cab suspension does a really good job of ironing out these bumps, and there's some pretty big ones across here. It's, um, it's really one of the things that I like about the Actros is that the ride quality. There's none of the cab rock and roll that used to happen in older Euro trucks. It's pretty well weighted, the suspension. And there's no harshness in it at all, even over the big bumps. But, but, it floats, there's no real harsh bumps in it. If there were, I could soften up the seat a bit. Let's just go a couple of clicks here. And that gives me probably too much. I actually prefer it locked up hard. That was one of the design briefs for Mercedes on this truck. One of their priorities was to get the driver comfort right. Even over this pretty average road, comfortable place to be. Having said that, I still think Vic Road should work on this bit of road. It's been bad for years and it's getting worse.
Well folks, after uh, 754 kilometres and 9 hours and 29 minutes of drive time, the Mercedes Actros 2653 averaged just over 2 kilometres to the litre. Time now to hand the keys back to the guys here at Daimler Trucks in Adelaide and for me to head home. I'll, I'm Dave White, I'll see you out on the road. <laughs>